There is something there that God is telling us about order. And that is why this question of, you know, same-sex marriage and all of that is from the pit of hell. It is attacking the very unit of the church. Satan's, Satan's strategy is destroy the home, you destroy the nation, and you destroy the church. Why try and fight the church? Go to the home and fight there. You won't attack you in church, you are too many. <laughs> you pray too much. So let me come out, let me come home where it's only the two of you. And then get in between. And then destroy it. So instead of trying to come and fight all of you here, frontal, frontal attack, let me take you one by one. That is why you, this message is so important. We need to wake up and open our eyes. The real battle that we are facing most of the time is in the home. Because if you can fix us at home, it doesn't matter what you come together in church and come and do. Hey! All right. So, the husband is to, watch this, the husband is to love the wife as Christ loves the church. Not as he likes. Not as he feels. As Christ loved the church. The question is, how did Christ love the church? He loved the church by dying for it. Remember that scripture in Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 12 that I preached the other day about dying to live? Life in you and death in me, that's the work of the husband. The husband goes, gets life from God, prays in the spirit, gives it to the wife and children. They live and he dies. Because he's like Jesus. He's supposed to die for his wife daily. He's supposed to die for his children daily. A, a, a man that a, a husband, let me use that expression, you know, that doesn't understand these things, has no business getting married. I'm not saying you shouldn't get married. What I'm saying is that you must make sure you are a good high priest before you marry. I've got a fax from heaven. Sorry, kids. Hello. One of the reasons why God hasn't shown you that girl yet. And he hasn't shown you that man yet. Is that neither of you are high priest or priest yet. There's no point showing you the girl or the, or, the, or, the, or the man. Because at this time, if you enter the place, you don't have the qualifications to be a high priest. So you want, you, you want, to, you want to get a woman? You want to get a, a fiancé? You want to get something? Go and work on your prayer life. When you come to a place where you are trusted as a high priest, then God can give you a woman. Amen. When you come to a place where you can be a trusted priest, then God can give you a man. Amen. I don't speak theory. Amen. They're not clapping, you know. <laughs> you clap, you don't clap. <laughs> it, it, change, it does not change the veracity of God's word. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you one of the reasons that is blocking people's prayers. A lot of people want to get married because of sex. You don't marry because of sex. You marry because you're a high priest. So you can provide adequate covering for your wife and children. But if you haven't even learned how to provide covering for yourself, how can you now provide for your wife and children? So we are praying, praying, praying. God said, go and work on yourself first. I'm waiting another two years. <laughs> but pastor, why do you say two years? <laughs> hey, but then so six months. <laughs> you know, that's what I did. When I, first, when I got born again, after the first three years or so, you know, I was on the campus. I was on the campus. I was in 
uh, we had a house where we started scripture pastor in Ojuri, and we all used to go to Queens, you know, go to the campus, we to the IVCU fellowship. I used to preach and all of that, and there were a lot of sisters around, you know, and, and everybody was getting engaged, you know, and I too. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> I saw a relationship that was really wasn't of God. Although God had mercy on us, you know, the person was a very nice person. I was a very nice person. You know, we didn't fornicate or anything like that, but it was, you know, so we had to, you know, God, God broke it up, you know, and uh, she's happily married today. She's in America somewhere, you know, with her husband and children. And God told me, he said, now, for the next one year, don't look at any girl. I'm telling you what God told me. He said, close your eyes. He said, because right now your vision is bad. You can't see anything. True story. What? I don't know what mommy said. She wasn't born again. I got a beautiful testimony. Do you know what I did for the next one year? This is a true story. I never went to visit anybody like I used to before it was every weekend. We go to Greece all go and talk to all the sisters and everything. I found it was exposing me to things it shouldn't be exposing me to. So I stopped it. My friends who are engaged, they can go. I stayed at home and prayed. And then every week I prayed one hour in the spirit for my wife, whoever it was going to be. I didn't know who he was. I had no idea. I didn't go and look at anything. I did it for one solid year. True story. My prayer life got balanced. Things got something. It was at that time that God brought um, Sarah into my life. And you know, when she was now telling me her testimony, she had, you know, an experience before. And what happened was that she almost died. And, you know, you know, she, she, the, God now brought her to you and then she got born again. Not only did she get born again, she got filled with the Holy Spirit. And she got filled with the Holy Spirit exactly the same way I got filled with the Holy Spirit. People pray for her, but it was, she was just kneeling down by her bed, just like me. What happened to me in London. And she was trying to pray and suddenly she started speaking in tongues. Then God said, that's your intercession. God drew her and kept her and then brought her for me. Custom midwife. Yeah. <laughs> With divine specification. Yeah. I'm being honest. I said, God, I want a woman like Gloria Copeland. I want a, a pray woman and I want a woman who can tell me the truth. I don't want a yes woman. I want a person who knows you herself and who loves you and who's a praying person. And that's what I was looking for. And that's exactly what I got. Amen. The work had been done, but it was done in the spirit. At the time, I didn't know she existed. You can't use these eyes to look. You will miss road. That's Nigerian language. You will miss road. That's the problem with the children of today. You know, they go, ah, ah, this one, fine. Uh, and you know, everybody's born again now. It was not like in our own time. Go send you a born again, you see. Oh, born again, go born again. <laughs> oh, born again, K-Leg. Born again, Kwashoko. Born, a, born, a, bo, born again, Tio Gino. I said that all in my language. I'm saying a lot of people, everybody is born again today. And what you have is that you've got a lot of people who are born again, but Christ is not formed in them. That's another word of someone I said. You know, and, 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 and if you look with the physical eyes, you can go and choose again. She may look nice on the outside, but only God sees the heart. Is she going to give you a problem later on? When I say, oh, I want to fast, I want to pray, or I, God told us to give one million naira to somebody, say, ah, not in my house. But if you have a woman who hears God herself, you don't have that problem. So, you know, God speaks to you, God speaks to her. And then there's harmony. 
This is why both of them must be priests. The husband is the high priest. The woman is also a priest. So they are speaking the same language. The spiritual language. One of the things that attracted me most to my wife was her prayers. Praise the Lord. But that's a true story. It was a result of intercession. It was a result of prayer. And we're all speaking the same language. And of course, you know, we started our relationship and then eventually we got married. Now, the point is this. You don't have any business. Marriage is a, is a spiritual endeavor. If you want to get married, get ready to be a pastor. Who will give himself continually unto prayer and the ministry of the word. If you're not ready to do that, don't marry. Amen. One amen. Only mommy Sarah. That is why, honey, God said I should preach this message. That's why we have a weak church today. The homes are weak. Because majority of the, of the husband and the wives are not strong enough to be priests. So the enemy finds it difficult, easy to walk in and out of the homes, which is the foundation of the church. So he weakens the church by weakening the homes. But that day is over. Yeah. Hence this message. Now. Am I helping anybody here? I'm not hearing too much amen from the young people. Well, one of the reasons why that girl hasn't come yet. Or that man hasn't come yet is because you're not yet ready. That's what happened to me. That's why I give you my testimony. I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. And I almost messed it up. God had to deal with me strictly. Said, no more girls. No more of that. You go and pray. And I did it for a whole year. And then after that, we came. So... I give that to you as a counsel. Hallelujah. After 32 years, I can, I, can, I can confidently say I made the right choice. Hallelujah. You know, truly, truly to the glory of God. Truly to the glory of God, I can look back at the problems my wife and I have had. If we were not praying people, hush. We would have been finished by now. You don't know the challenges that life has ahead of you. Let me get to the high priest. Husband, to love his wife as Christ loves the church. And give himself in prayer for her and the children, washing their feet. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. He said, love one another as I have loved you. So you wash your wife's feet regularly. Once every six hours, every opportunity, when she says things she shouldn't say, or something, you've got to forgive, love, pray. That's your job. Three amens. <laughs> You pray for her and the children that daily that Christ be formed in them. My little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. That's your ministry. As a husband and a high priest. And God paints a beautiful picture of this. In the garments of the high priest. Follow me to Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. I'm going to read everything. I'm going to pick the places that God wants me to pick. 28. Exodus chapter 28 verse 10. Here. The. Uh, 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 um, I'm going to give the background because of time. God 
called Moses said, come, 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 come. Put Aaron and his sons in the priesthood. Then he says, this is the kind of dress you are going to make for Aaron. This is Aaron's own now, the high priest. And it had a lot of things, but I just want to, he, 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 he had a white, there was a white undergarment that went to the land. That was the one that had the pomegranates and the bells. Then on top of that, there was a blue, bluish kind of one, you know. Then there was what is called a curious girdle, you know, that had a breastplate. Now, it is this breastplate that's been described here. And this is what he says. The breastplate had two parts to it, the front and the back. So you would use what today we would call a clip. To clip it here and clip it here. You clip the back part, you clip the front part. Okay? Now, the, the clip here, the one on the shoulder, had, it was made of a precious stone. And inside the stone, he engraved. Let's read it now. It says, and these are the garments which thou shalt make. Okay, go to verse 4. And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate, an effort, and a robe, and a broidered coat. That robe is the long white one. The broidered coat is the, is the, is the um, like a small coat. Then the effort is something on top of it. And the effort now contains the, uh, uh, um, the breastplate. Then it might as just say turban, you know, and a girdle. And they shall make thy holy garments for, for thy Aaron, thy brother, his sons, that they be missed now to me in the priest's office. Now jump to verse 10 because of time. Verse 10. Now, that, those, those pouches, jewels really, it, it, was a, it was a pin. It was a, it was a pin. It was like a button. But it wasn't just an ordinary button. It was a button that the top of it was made out of a precious stone. So God now said, go to verse 9. Uh, I think I went a little bit prematurely. Yes, good. He says, and thou shalt take two oink stones very expensive very very who said god doesn't like good things this is real jewelry real jewelry oink stones and grave on them they will engrave the names of the children of israel verse 10 six of their names on one stone and six on the rest of the other on the other stone According to their birth. Verse 11. The work of an engraver, with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet. And thou shalt engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel and shall make them to be set in ouches of gold. Next verse. Another message for another day. Now, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the efforts. The effort for stones of memorial up to the children of Israel. And what? Aaron will bear their names before the Lord. That's the work of every husband. Every day you put the names of your children and grandchildren, you put them on your shoulder, you go as the high priest and you bear them before the Lord. It's the work of the high priest. But I'm not done yet. Jump to verse 15 because of time. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. That means very skillful embroidery. You know, like in Yoruba land now, say, what kushe? What kushe sagbada? You know, okay. The cunning work. After the work of the effort, thou shalt make it of gold. This is the kind of thread they used. They use gold. They use blue. They use purple. They use scarlet. And of fine twined linen, thou shalt make it. Next verse. Four square. It shall be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the bearer of. In other words, it's going to be a square. You know, length and breadth is the same. Verse 17. And thou shalt set in it, in what? Inside the breastplate. 
settings of stones, even four rows of stones, the first row, watch this, shall be a sardius, a topaz, a kabunko. This shall be the first row, 18. The second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. Verse 19. The third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. Verse 20. And the fourth row, a beryl, an oinx, and a jasper. And they shall be set in gold in their clothes. Your children will be set in gold. You haven't heard anything yet. Verse 21. Glory be to God. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Twelve according to their names like the engravings of a signet. Everyone with his name shall they be according to their tribes. So not only did he have their names on their shoulder, he had it on his breast. He carried it every, whenever the high priest went before God, he carried the name of the 12 tribes of Israel on his chest to make intercession for them. Every husband should carry the name of his children and his wife on his breastplate and go to make intercession for them. Sure. You carry every day. I pray with my wife every day, you know. But before I pray for her, with her, I've prayed. Usually get up around three, four. So I pray, I pray until about six, seven, then I go and pray with her. I take the children, I take the husbands, their, their spouses, I take the grandchildren and all of that. I put it before the Lord. Now I'm going to show you the order. Follow me to Leviticus. I told you I'll be smashing in and out of the New Testament and Old Testament. Look at Leviticus. Am I helping anybody here? Leviticus chapter 16, verse 17. Cause of time. God is having mercy. Good. This is describing the operation of the high priest on the day of atonement. Now, this is a type. In the, the Old Testament, there was only one day a year that the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. That has changed. We go into the Holy of Holies every day now. Hello, because Jesus has made the way. Are you listening to me? I said there shall be no man in the tabernacle. I didn't hear you. Of the congregation. When he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out. And have made, watch the order. An atonement, one, for himself, two, for his household, three, for all the congregation of Israel. Every husband has this responsibility. He has to go daily. You pray for yourself. You cannot pray. You can't give what you don't have. Then you pray for your wife and your children. That's minimum of two phases a day. I remember someone want to get married. <laughs> and Joe, it's pray for me. Men find it difficult to even pray for them. So how is he going to, you know? And then you now pray for Israel. Now, Israel there means the church. If I'm a pastor, for example, I pray for scripture pastor. If you're not a pastor, your business is your church. Do you know that the way your business is going to function and prosper is when you pray about it regularly? And this is the order. So when you when you become a when you're a man you know when you you grow into maturity you want to get married is a serious responsibility because you you have to cover for yourself then you have to cover for your wife and your children in that order and then you now cover for your business or if you have a church a ministry like this one you pray about that or even if you're not the senior pastor here you still have responsibilities pastor Blake has responsibilities pastor andrew called himself a sergeant major he's not a sergeant major he's a brigadier general praise the lord <laughs> he was being humble you know humility was practicing what i said you make yourself lower than what you know you are he knew he wasn't a sergeant <laughs> Every one of us has responsibilities that we have to pray about on a daily basis. 
This is how the church and the home should function. On the air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a faith partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org. Well, our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Songo Ibadan. God bless you. Uh, uh.